we've set up a, a small exhibition to mark um, Wexford sailing ships from, from 1840s to 1940s, 100 years of sail, and we have a, a, a book to accompany the, um, the exhibition as well. The Tintern Trails are trails through uh, um, um forestry, 120 acres, and uh, we work in conjunction with Quilcher and uh, we have developed 15 uh, kilometres of trails at this stage and uh, we are now uh, getting to a stage where we want to uh, develop a uh, trail for um, people in wheelchairs and that's this, this is the beginning of it. Many of um, these type of houses uh, left in existence around Fort Mountain and particularly on a walking trail. Uh, the walking trail wa walks directly by it so it, it gives you a bit of a feel for what it was like to live back in those times. Um, the house would have been actually um, opera operational and uh, habitable up until the 1950s and then it was abandoned and it basically fell to a ruin. So our, our thing was then to, to try to stabilise the ruin. Um, and it's become more from stabilisation works to nearly rebuild, a total rebuild. So our plan is hopefully in time to actually put a roof back on it. And we've been around since 1943. We were in Kilkenny Castle uh, for many years, from, since 1976, for over 44 years. And we moved to the Evans home here in August of 2020. This is a heritage building that was built in 1818 via funds from the philanthropist Joseph Evans. So we had a coffee morning for people who had worked in the Braun Archive and as well as documenting the architectural history I'm really interested in the social history of the building and people came and met one another, people who hadn't seen each other for a long time who worked in Braun and they brought all sorts of beautiful things to add to the archive that might not be of such historical significance, but they're really important in terms of the social history. So for instance, this is a newsletter, that's like a social newsletter for people who worked. This one is from 1987. So we have, you know, all sorts of funny caricatures that were made of people who work there. Um, we also had people bring us actual objects that were made in Carlo in the factory that they've kept as an artifact themselves that they want to donate to Carlo Museum. So it was a really amazing um, mm -hmm. moment to meet people who had worked there and to uh, gather artifacts in a very collective public way. This is a, a nature reserve that we manage for butterflies. So the Irish Peatland Conservation Council own and manage this reserve for the butterflies, especially the marsh fritillary, which is an annex species. We already take part in the butterfly monitoring scheme, but because our bumblebees are under such threat, we decided that it is time now to start recording the bumblebees as well along this reserve. So kind of really interested in conservation and wanted to build on their experience with identifying the, bum the bumblebees. And so did the other um, generation. So they all really were interested in trying to identify the bumblebees. And it really, it, it's simple to do. You're just looking for particular parts of the bee. And they basically took that information away knowing that they can identify some of the most common bees in their garden. So um, James Malton's contribution to art and architecture really I suppose comes down to the 25 uh, views of Dublin City that he uh, produced uh, at the end of the 18th century. And they capture the city uh, as it was then at the height of its Georgian pomp.
club was formed in 1830, we've been playing on the ground since the 1840s, so we're here for 170 something years. Uh, we've had some very famous uh, players who've played here over the centuries. Uh, we've had uh, Charles Lawrence who played cricket here as a professional, the first professional in Ireland and is one of the founders of cricket in Australia, which is the, uh, one of the premier test playing nations in the world and uh, we have photographs, anyone who comes up to the club and, look, and travels and looks around uh, will see that we photographs going back to the 1860s of teams that played here and uh, we've been here for 191 years and we intend to be here for another 191 so our heritage is very important to us. The uh, activities today for Heritage Week, well we have a couple of really interesting workshops going on as well as an experimental archaeology demonstration and that's happening out in the walled garden there where artist Hella Helsner will demonstrate her research in Bronze Age, the ancient art of Bronze Age smelting and casting in tin. Also here in the garden behind me on the front lawn you can see sculptor James Horan uh, doing a head modelling in clay class and then also inside in one of the chapels we have Rosemary Cavanagh offering a basket making weaving workshop for children and adults. Kind of a painting outdoors, an en plein air um, event for members of the public just to come out and really interact with their environment um, and really get to you know, further appreciation of the, the rivers and lakes and seas of Sligo.